All right, let's get started then. Um, welcome everybody to our August meeting of the San Mateo County Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Commission. Commission. Um, we're, we do not have a quorum quite yet. Uh, we need six commissioners present, but um, we can get started on a few agenda items. I guess once we swear in a couple of commissioners, then we would have a quorum, wouldn't we? Yep, we will. There we go. We'll okay, that's convenient. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> so actually, why don't we? Well, we have one commissioner. Zahara's not here quite yet, so we'll hold off just for a minute on the oh, on the true. swearing in. Okay. Uh, on, in the first part of our agenda, uh, we one thing that we can get to right now, Karen, is <laughs> the membership update. I think that's the one thing that we can do there. Sure. So yeah. the membership update is quite short uh, in the sense that um, <clears throat> we have three candidates that we will be interviewing in the next couple of weeks. We had kind of slowed the membership process a bit because of vacations and travel schedules. It was difficult to get the membership committee together, um, but it looks like we will be able to find some common dates for the end of next uh, <clears throat> Yeah, end of next week or beginning um, of the following week. There is Labor Day in between. A bunch of commissioners are just entering right now. So um, we continue to get expressions of interest from others in the community and from Volunteer Match, which is a good source of uh, potential new commissioners. And I know that our membership committee is also doing a lot of outreach, talking to people, sending me little notes from people that are interested so it's uh i think we have a good profile in the community and have a lot of interest so in the next uh month we'll be able to report back to you on the the results of our interviews great thank you commissioner huber levy you're welcome uh all right we just had a uh, a rush of people uh join us which is great because now we do have a quorum um so i will call the meeting officially to order uh, welcome everyone. And if you are uh, on Zoom and you uh, would like Spanish translation, it is available. Um, Teresa is uh, doing our Spanish translation at the moment. Um, and if you need any help or instructions with that, um, please, please, uh, please message her in um, in Zoom. Okay. Uh, so let's have a roll call. Who's going to, who's keeping yeah, notes today? I, yeah. okay. Commissioner Amaya Nori, um, while you are booting up, I will start by saying, um, Commissioner LaBuise, I'm present. Okay. Um, I could just do the roll and then yes, you Yes, thank you. Chair LaBuise is here. I am present. Um, and you are? Wesley Liu. Okay. Commissioner Amaya Nori. Present. Commissioner Heber Levy. Present. Commissioner Bocanegro is not here right now. Yeah. Commissioner Ginevra. Present. Commissioner Seth Lignori. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rasmussen is online. Commissioner Swope. Here. Commissioner Wilson. Stop. Commissioner Wilson is apparently on the way. And and Commissioner Rasmussen is online, but on in a car on the way here. <clears throat> so we'll have her later. Okay, that we do have a quorum. Uh, thank you very much. Let's let's proceed to um, approving minutes from past meetings. There were two months worth of minutes in the agenda packet. Uh, we haven't approved minutes for. Um, I move approval of two minutes. Second. Okay. Any comments or edits or changes on those? I did notice one thing. Which is in the July minutes. We are talking about those right now. Oh, you, you are talking? We about are them? not. We're oh, we're just doing June. I thought yeah. you no, I only moved did. both. My apologies. <laughs> uh, if, there are no, if there are no changes or edits to the June minutes, um, all in favor of approving the minutes say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, let's move on to the July minutes. I move approval of the July minutes. Second. Uh, any edits or comments? Okay, I'll speak up again. The only thing I noticed was that in July that 
Whitney was listed as both present and absent. And I think <laughs> that's that uh, for the <laughs> absent, I'm not, sure which, woman, so. I'm not sure which, but I was absent. I was not mentioned as uh, present or absent. Mm -hmm. So okay. maybe your name got switched around. Yeah. Okay. That was it. Also, I noted that we did not um, include the list of attendees. And we usually try to include the list of attendees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did not have the in-person attendees. So I didn't just want to list the remote attendees. But I'll try to report the people who okay. are it isn't really necessary. It's nice. Well, I just noticed on the June minutes, forgive me for interrupting, and I know you just approved them, but on page one under partners and stakeholders, there's just a typo in the spelling of my name. There's an oh. S -E at the end. Yes. I think that could be corrected. That was all. Sorry, I missed that before you approved them. No problem. We will get that fixed. Uh, Thank you. All right. Any other edits or changes to the July minutes. All right, so um, I think the motion on the floor is to approve with those uh, small edits and, and changes. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Abstentions? Great. June and July minutes are now official <clears throat> on the website. Thank you, uh, Wesley and Maya. So moving on now to our agenda for this evening, which we also need to vote to approve. I move approval of the agenda. Second. Did any commissioners want to make any changes, edits to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of the agenda? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. The agenda is approved. Um, now, moving on to the fun part, uh, Judge Atazadi, we're ready to swear in uh, Zahara Agarwal and Ruth Singh as new commissioners. All right. So um, let's see. I see Ruth there. And where is Zahara? Right here. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. So do, do you each have a copy of your oath in front of you? Uh, no? The only reason I ask is then I will read slowly so that when you repeat after me, if you don't remember, just let me know. Okay. Okay. Could you please uh, both raise your right hands? Thank you. And uh, please state your name. Let's see. Zahara Agarwal. Okay. And then I'm going to read two lines and ask you to repeat after I've finished reading them. So do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties I am about to enter. Discharge the duties which I am about to enter. Congratulations to both of you. I will, uh, yes, I will sign these and then get them back to Adriana so that you can sign them. And then it will be official and welcome aboard. Thank you. Great. And and just to clarify, even if it's not signed yet, the, they can still vote in tonight's meeting. Is that is that right? Yes. Yes. OK. OK, great. Um, all right. Welcome, Commissioners Agarwal and Singh. Uh, we now have what's up? I just have one point. Well, um, what we did in the past was, or the last meeting, we also had Judge Adesati uh, swear the oath of confidentiality. The oath of confidentiality. I was thinking about that. I don't know if she has that in front of her. No, I had it last month because it was part of the package. Mm -hmm. So I did yeah. not have 
that. I wasn't aware that you wanted me to do that. Yeah, that's uh, that's my fault for not flagging that in the agenda. So why don't we do that next month? And since okay. I wasn't, okay. you can put it in the chat if she wants. No, let's okay. let's just do it next month yeah. since okay. we're just not ready to okay. ready for it. And uh, and I also need to take that oath officially uh, because I wasn't okay. for last month's meeting. So the screen with the oath. We'll 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 do it next month. Well, yeah. you know what I'll do going forward. I'll make sure it's in my iPhone in a file so that I can bring it up going forward i just don't have it in a file on my iphone so no worries. okay share. okay thank you commissioners really want to do it right now okay we can share this we can share the screen how about this okay we will share uh leslie do you have it or is it's, oh, it's, i have it too oh you've got it oh all right there it is lovely all right so okay the other commissioners who were not present last time other than me, myself whitney so Judge Atizadi, we're doing this for four commissioners, <laughs> Commissioner Ginevro, myself, and our two new commissioners. Okay, sounds good. So the all of you that are being sworn or given this oath of confidentiality, please raise your right hands. And then I'm gonna just state the preamble up here. Uh, the intent of this oath of confidentiality is to ensure all commissioners are aware of their responsibilities to maintain the confidentiality of juveniles protected information. Each commissioner must sign an oath of confidentiality. Recognizing that all juvenile case files and court matters are strictly confidential under the California Welfare and Institutions Code section 827, please each of you state your name. Monroe LaBuise. Samara Agarwal. And then I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me and the good news is that you have the oath on the screen. So as a member of the San Mateo <clears throat> County Juvenile Justice Commission, swear or affirm, and I'll just read the entire line until there's a period, uh, swear or affirm that I will keep potentially identifying youth information, case file records, cases preserved and other protected information confidential. As a member of the San Mateo County Juvenile Justice Commission, swear or affirm that I will keep potentially identifying youth information, case file records, cases observed, and other protected information confidential. In addition, I agree to use the authority of the commission only in the interests of the youth of the county and to use discretion, diligence, and integrity in conducting the business of the commission consistent with its statutory purpose of inquiring into the administration of the juvenile court law. In addition, in addition I agree to use the authority of the commission only in the interest of the youth of the county and to use discretion, diligence, and integrity in conducting the business of the commission consistent with its statutory purpose of inquiring into the administration of the juvenile court law. I understand this oath of confidential, uh, confidentiality and have read and understood the operating policies of the San Mateo County Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Commissions. I understand, I understand this oath of confidentiality and have read and understood the operating policies of the San Mateo County Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Commissions. Thank you in advance for following through with this very important oath. Thank you, Judge Atizadi. You'll need to have all of you sign a copy of it. So yeah, to I, I'm going to send you each a copy by email, and then if you can sign it and send me back your signed copy, then I'll make sure that it's um, kept on our Google Drive. Great. Okay, we're going to move on to section two of our agenda. Uh, and in section two, we invite members of the public to make public comment on items that are not already on the agenda. Uh, for items on the agenda, we will also invite members of the public to make uh, comment during the meeting. So if there are any members of the public uh, here in person or online who would like to make public comment, uh, you're welcome to do it now.
There are no hands raised on Zoom. Okay. Not, I don't see any hands raised. Um, then we will move on with the uh, with the agenda of the meeting. So, uh, Judge Atizani, back to you. We start with updates from our system partners and uh, and always go with the court first. So, I, I yeah, always updates. Appreciate, I always appreciate that, and it's always nice to see everybody here. But I, I don't have any updates for anyone. So, unless anybody has questions. Are there any commissioners with questions? Okay, thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we will then move on to an update from the private defender group, and uh, and I see Ron Reyes here. Welcome, Ron. I see everyone. Good evening. Uh, so I'll start with uh, some of the numbers I give you each month, and I have a quick uh, program update I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, so uh, we made in the last four weeks. 47 appointments, those are cases that came through. Uh, of those 47 cases, four cases contain 707B type of allegations to them. Uh, we handled 11 ceilings uh, for youth loss in the last four weeks. And then we also, through our Miranda hotline, we fielded 44 calls. And as far as the program update, um, you know, for a number of years, we've been co collaborate in collaboration with uh, between our office and the Youth Education Law Project at Stanford Law. Um, and uh, the collaboration has been uh, through the, the clinic to provide direct representation for our clients who are facing either school discipline or they need help with uh, setting up IEP or other school related like 504 plans or things of that nature. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually excited that we're expanding on that collaboration uh, to include screening for youth who are entering into the ju uh, juvenile justice system with the goal is to make sure that we've proven their educational outcome as well as the outcome for ju their juvenile justice cases. And that work will, the, the work, the screening will be done uh, by law students who's going to volunteer and will be surprised, uh, supervised by Epic Gail Trillin, who is on Zoom here uh, from Stanford uh, Youth Education uh, Law Project. And then they will work in conjunction with the attorney assigned to the case, as well as the, the social workers and the investigator assigned to the case. Uh, initially, uh, the focus would be on youth who are incarcerated or that the case is related to an incident that happened at school. Uh, and then uh, with, with that, uh, with, with the <clears throat> and then based on that initial screening, if there is a need for a for full referral, to direct representation, we can make that referral to the clinic, and then they well, and then they will consider direct representation. Uh, this is an area, you know, we always talk about breaking the school to the prison pipe, pipeline, and that's an integral area of what we do in to, to kind of break that pipeline. And uh, we're very excited, and, and hopefully, we'll continue to grow it. And, uh, uh, you know, and then build up on that collaboration. So that's my update and I'm happy to take any questions. So just to clarify, and I'll, I'll reach out to Abigail, but are they doing IEP testing? I, no, it'll be, a, so, I'm sorry, which, the sorry, the, the Stanford, the Yelp program, how, what, what are they providing for you? They're going to be do initial screening. Screening for possible providing, learning. Providing the schoolwork and give us a workup on what their situation is like in school. Do they have an IEP? Do they need one? If they do need one and they're not getting help, they can, if they can provide that legal representation, they will do. But I defer to that for the last Perfect. Week. Thank you. That just gives me a little bit more context. Appreciate it. Abigail, did you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, I, I apologize for being off camera. I'm actually driving, but um, I'll be happy to come in person next time um, so I can meet you all and answer any questions because we're kind of up and running. But it's great to be here. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to learn more about that program. I think that'd be really interesting to hear more details about that. Okay, great. Any other questions from commissioners about uh, that or or the other part of uh, Ron's update? Yeah. Uh, in your update, you mentioned 11 ceiling, or uh, what was that? Before the 44 million? Uh, ceiling of records, yeah. Oh, oh, see, okay. We have prior records and they qualified for the ceiling, so we see their records. Yeah. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> moving on to um, our usual update from probation. Um, who I see back at the second row there. Hello. Hi there. Welcome. So I'm Sanam Aram, the new superintendent for the YSC, and uh, I don't really have much to report except that uh, the numbers that I bring here is uh, we have 21 youth in custody currently, 20 male, one female, and at Camp Kemp, we are currently at two females. And uh, I have don't really have much else to say unless anybody has any questions. Uh, so we're doing the educational inspection next week. Who would be, who's the person who's, who would be the right person for me to talk to to get a list of what each youth is doing who's already graduated from high school? Is that San Mateo County Office of Ed or is it probation? Yes. San Mateo County. So what I, I believe that they have reached out and, and Bonnie did provide some information. I'm looking for that second layer of, of getting more yeah, content. I, I would connect go to them. them. It, it's confusing because the law has changed so much that it's not clear to me yet who has supervisory responsibility for youth who are no longer in high school. So I know Title 18 is changing and yeah. I'm actually still over compliance in the yeah. section. So everybody who has graduated is individualized plans. So I think it would be dependent on the individual and what they want to do, whether they're, you know, kind of doing something online vocational wise, we are bringing in Paxton Patterson. Um, if they want to continue education, they've already started project change. Mm -hmm. And then there's some that are doing more classes, right? And, and they're taking whatever classes and they're kind of arranging that with the school department. Um, but so the school department would be the coordinating body education wise for what each of these youth are doing and probation. We're working in conjunction with one another. Okay. Okay. But for the school inspection, anything that's educational wise, then it would be the school department. Okay. What about the cultural makeup of the 20, of the 21 in custody? We have 18 Hispanic, one Hawaiian, one of mixed race and an African American. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Joanna and I uh, inspected YFC uh, two weeks ago, and then we also saw the new, like, the room with the mural. I was wondering if you had any pictures because it really looked really, like, really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really good to share with the commission. I don't have this on me. I can go ahead and, and send a row. We plan on having our room very, very soon because they just finished the hallway up. So we're just doing the mural. The youth are doing the mural. Some of the and staff. It's been a probably like a two year process with COVID, but then they just finished the hallway. Um, That's great. The mural is really beautiful. Um, I hope we'll all get a chance to see it because it's really, really beautiful. Um, I apologize. I don't have the overall probation number, but I'll send that to you in a row. I know normally we just do an overall and then go on the website, but yeah. for what I usually report, I'll send that to you. Okay, we can uh, we can put that in the minutes and maybe share it with the commissioners. Yeah, thank, thank you, Ms. Clark. Um, I just had one uh, comment to make. Um, we learned during our inspection of Camp Kemp that the county is no longer in contract with Sonoma County for accepting girls into our program. So I think that's a big development that I wanted to share. And if anyone has any questions, maybe for Ms. Clark um, about that. But I thought that was a um, something worth mentioning. No, that's a change. Is, is there a reason for that that, that, uh, that you can share or? 
What's that? <laughs> That's so okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fair answer. The contract came to an end. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how about the cultural makeup of the young girls? Camp camp? Camp camp animal female. The way. There's two girls that are there as one Caucasian and one. Okay, great. Any other questions for probation before we move on to our presentation from our um, community organization? Okay, great. So we will move on now to uh, section four of the agenda, and we have with us um, Becca Keeler. Hi, Becca. Hello. And it's just you, Beth is not here. Beth is that... not here. Okay, she good. Apologizes. She's. Um, Kauai. Can you do that and uh, and I think Wesley, are you able to share a screen? Who's going to share a screen? Yes. Thank you. All right, welcome, Miss Keeler. Take it away. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting us. And Beth does send her apologies. She's a co-founder of In Our Care, uh, along with myself, and she's away for the week. So. Um, if we could have the next slide. Um, thank you for having us here. And the question was, who are we and what are we doing and why? why? And um, In Our Care, San Mateo County was created um, by community members uh, out of frustration, quite frankly, um, because we saw some wonderful things going on right here with this body, JJDPC. Uh, we wanted to honor the humanity of the youth in our legal system. Um, our youth in our legal system because they are our youth. It is our system and it, they are in our care. And we wanted to be able to support that effort um, and to support the work that you all here at JJDBC are doing. So that really is the reason for us being created to bring this to the community and have get help from the community to support the efforts that you are all uh, supporting. There, currently, there's approximately 50 uh, community members and counting moving forward. Thank you. Um, so our, we have two main priorities. Um, we can see that we could add to those more rapidly than we can, uh, than we can pay attention to. Um, but our two main priorities are number one. Um, in February of 2022, you passed uh, Resolution 2022-02 which was asking the district attorney to please stop charging youth as adults. Um, and that has kind of not gone forward and much to all of our frustration. Um, and I just wanna do a little history on that. Probably most everybody in this room knows this, but uh, interestingly enough in the 1700s, um, in this country, we charged anybody over the age of seven years of age as an adult in the 1700s. Yeah, I know, we've learned, thank goodness, okay? When I was a youth during Vietnam War, um, we were sending children to war that didn't have a boat. And so we reduced the age from 21 to 18. And fortunately or unfortunately, that came down to, to our juvenile system as well. And the juveniles now are considered adults at 18 years of age. Um, if you, if you look at what the Supreme Court says and what, um, as well, science says, science says that full frontal lobe maturation doesn't take effect until somewhere between the age of 24 and 26 years of age. So I think we still have some growing to do, personally. Um, but what we really want to do is amplify your resolution and get the community support. And to that effect, we are working we have met with District Attorney Wagstaff, we have met with um, Probation Chief uh, Keene and Mackeskill. Um, we've met with several of the supervisors and intend to hopefully meet with all the rest of them. Anyone else that any of you think we should meet with, please let us know. We're here to put your efforts forward. Um, but we are trying to gain, uh, to gain support, and I think we're doing that. We're getting some really good feedback uh, and had some more this morning from one of the supervisors. Um, we're organizing the community, uh, bringing various groups within the community that have similar efforts that are crossover with what we're doing, that are wanting to work with us. We're more powerful the more numbers there are. 
Um, and so we're bringing public support. And, and I guess maybe one of our other priorities, or at least mine, is that I think the community, that the general public really needs educating. When they understand what's really going on, uh, it's, it's amazing the response we're getting. Um, we've been sitting in on all the court hearings of the three youth that the district attorney put forward to possibly charge uh, in adult court. Um, and if I may just take a moment to thank Judge Edesati for her wisdom this morning of following the letter of the law and keeping one of the youth in the youth system that was created for them because they aren't fully mature. And because as not fully mature adults, um, they also, interestingly enough, have a lot more ability to be rehabilitated. And um, most of the most of the youth, this is actually true of adults as well as of youth, but most people that go through the legal system and go into any kind of incarceration, most people come back into our community. And so it's also uh, something that we're putting forward is it is not only to these youth's best interest to be able to be rehabilitated in the youth system, it's to the community's best interest to be able to have them come back into the community as healthier rehabilitated people than they went into the system. Uh, into the system. Um, we also are working to get general generic data uh, on statistics of who is in the system, especially those youth that are being tried as adults, but also just in general, who's in, in this going through our juvenile legal system. So far, that has fallen. We've been going through the district attorney's office, and so far, we've not been able. That's been rejected, uh, I believe, two, I'm not sure, it might be three times now. So we're trying to find a better way to get that information. If anybody has information on that, that would be helpful also. Um, our second priority is just basically to support the inspections that you do. Um, I was kind of appalled to find out that these inspections are mandated, and yet I've seen the inspections that you did from last year, and very little of those things have evidently been um, implemented. And <laughs> this was very, very frustrating that it's a man it's mandated that the that the inspections be done, but not that it, there's any implementation of the recommendations that you've made. So we're also pulling, we're helping to inform the public uh, and various organizations that are, as I said, also interested in similar uh, crossover things in regards to youth in the legal system, pulling them together to, to, to talk with our board of supervisors and powers that be to hopefully um, bring more, more pressure uh, or recommendation or awareness of the recommendations you're making and why these are important to have implemented. Um, we do have a new website. Uh, shout out to Karina um, for, uh, for our new website. Um, please take a look at it. Um, and we did a tour, thanks to probation. Uh, we did a tour, a really nice tour of both facilities, both of YSC. It was very helpful um, and very, very thorough. Um, and it was really helpful to actually see what it looks like as opposed to just kind of hear and wonder. So we got to see YSC and we got to see Camp Camp <coughs> both. Um, so those are the things that we've been working on in regards to that. Um, and, and I want to back up just one second in regards to the um, in regards to the tours and some of the things that were very evident to us. I'm not sure, but I think between the three youth facilities, Camp Glenwood, which is not being utilized at all, the YSC and uh, Camp Camp, I think there's room for well for over 200 youth. Mm -hmm. And, and it's serving um, 21, I think you said, uh, and, and two girls at Camp Camp, which to me is a vast underutilization of services, a vast underutilization of taxpayer funds. Uh, there's so many things. Um, it could be a step-down program. One of them could be used as a step-down program, uh, could be used for drug and alcohol rehabilitation, could be used for the vast uh, homelessness that's going on in our county. 
in our whole country, but in our county. Um, there's so many better uses. Um, and so one of the things that we've really tried to say to um, probation is that we really want to partner with them and help help in whatever ways we can um, to, to make, make some of these changes. And in talking with Chief Keen, he has said there's a lot of the programs that he's not able to bring in, and we understand this very well, because when there was a larger population, we're thankful there's not, but when there was a larger population, they could partner with big organizations to bring in the, the programs. And now there's a very small population and nobody wants the small contracts. So what we're putting out to probation is that we are talking with the community and talking with members of the community, uh, organizations, small contractors, that would be willing to come in and take these contracts and even volunteers that would be come, willing to come in and do this. So ways that we can bring better programming to um, the youth and we'd really like to partner with probation in regards to that. Okay, um, what's next? So there could be a million things on this list, but we only have bandwidth for a few. And um, amplifying, as I said, the reports um, that you folks are putting out here uh, on the conditions uh, in the various, in the YSC and Camp Camp, uh, and trying to get really creative, which is, I guess, what I was just talking about, reaching out to the community to see how can we bring the services that it's hard to get in the traditional ways? How can we think outside the box and bring those services to, to our youth? Um, uh, also, as I said, pulling from many organizations that are really uh, expressing a lot of interest in what we're doing, have crossover um, efforts that they're making and pulling together with them. And bottom line, and I think you've all been working, many of you have been working on this whole reimagining of youth detention. <laughs> We, we feel that from very many of them, hopefully we find a, a much stronger, uh, a, a much more rehabilitative way to take care of these youth to bring them back into, into uh, their homes. Um, if, if we just can all put our heads together and work together uh, and better utilize um, the facilities that we have. These are the various ways you can connect with us. I also have cards here if you want to connect with me personally. Um, I want to do a shout out to uh, Sophia uh, Health, who's uh, Heath, who's um, an intern who just put together our Instagram and got it up today, and just got to get just got our Facebook page up also. So we're working on those things to get it out and to get the information out to the community. And please join us like or whatever it is you do on all these things yes. um, and pass them on so that other people are being aware of what you're doing and what we're trying to do with you and for you and that's pretty much it um next slide i think says is there one one more yeah which is gracias thank you um i'm happy if you have questions i'm happy to take them but i know you also have a full agenda so i'm also happy to speak with you afterwards either way thank you Thank you. Yeah. Um, are there commissioners who have comments or questions for in our care? Commissioner Rasmussen. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, say thank you. I think it's a huge compliment that an organization was formed to support our work. I mean, that is a huge statement. So I appreciate that all the hours and time that everyone in your organization is putting out there so um, generously to support our work to elevate our kids and, and their needs. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for all that you do. Just a quick, quick question. I know that the thanks, of course, for your work. But um, are you currently partnered with any organizations? I know you said that you were meeting with some individuals and officials, but do you currently have any like nonprofit organizations that you're partnered with that are not technically partnered with us? We have several we're in conversation with, and if you have organizations that you think would be good for us to reach out to, definitely. we've got a list. We're just trying to work through it slowly, and we're actually having some people start to reach out to us. Oh, perfect. That's really awesome. pretty cool yeah that it's like oh you know who we are <laughs> so 
so it takes volume, volumes to the work that you're already doing so yeah well yeah thank you and yeah again if you have organizations that you think would be a good complement we'll reach out to them or connect them to us either way that's good perfect thank you Anyone else? Are there uh, are there any members of the public that wanted to make public comment or might have uh, questions? Who are present here or online? Uh, I do. Hi, I'm Tiffany Ohila Hotel. Um, I'm actually an applicant. Um, sorry, I'm not on camera. I'm trying to multitask right now. But um, I'm the executive director of Anamatangi Polynesian Voices here in East Palo Alto. I'm happy to be on this call. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I personally will be re reaching out to, um, sorry, I forgot the, Becca. the Becca. Rebecca. Becca. Yes, I'll be reaching out to you as um, we are um, mm -hmm. starting an initiative around restorative justice and um, keeping the family units together. And that means starting with, uh, well, we started with the youth in the summer and we're zooming out to um, continue the care with the parents. So I'll be reaching out as an organization to support this work. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. So Becca, do you, it sounds like there's a dialogue with Chief Keene and like you're you're going back with service providers, et cetera. Um, we've presented that to him. Okay. We've not gotten approval for him, okay. him for an additional conversation. Okay, thank you. But, yes. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Ms. Keeler, for coming and telling us about your work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Uh, great. And I have not run out of battery yet. I can still see the agenda. Um, we're going to move on to uh, section five of our agenda um, and have commissioners give updates on current projects. Um, the big one of which right now is uh, is inspections. Uh, so, Johanna, I put you as giving an update and then inspection leads also, because I assume you wanted to pass it around to people. I certainly that, do. Yes. So inspections are uh, underway. And um, I think um, I, I, we had some issues because we had, we have several youth commissioners who went back to school. So we started and then we needed to come back to finish some of our inspections. So mm -hmm. we're in that process now. Um, I am working with Paul on the Camp Kemp inspection. I'm also uh, working with Amea on the YSC inspection. Wesley is also on that team. We'll be returning to finish looking at the documents when we find a date that, that works for, for the facility. Um, if everyone wants, to, if our other leads want to go around, I guess it'll be you, Monroe and Melissa, give an update and then maybe we could talk about how we want to present them when and if we need to hold another special meeting this year, I think now would be a good time to make a decision on how we're going to move forward on that. Sounds good. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I will just, so you mentioned Camp Kemp and the YSC. Another facility that we are inspecting is uh, Canyon Oaks Youth Center. And um, the team is myself, Commissioner Hubert Levy and uh, Commissioner Swope. We did visit Kenyon Oaks um, last week, uh, conducted an inspection, got a lot of good information. Um, there may be a few other thing, uh, bits of information that we need to collect, but, uh, but we are starting the process of, of, of producing a draft report. Um, and I have not discussed this with my fellow inspectors um, who could object, but personally, it seems to me like we have a, enough information and probably can get enough information to maybe produce a draft uh, before our next meeting. I think so. I would agree. Okay, great. Uh, so we're getting some uh, kind of agreement on that. Uh, I think, and I think that that draft should be pretty complete. We might, there might be a few changes that the commission wants to make when they get to review the draft, but I'm hoping that by our October meeting that we should be done with the Canyon Oaks inspection. 
That's excellent. Yeah, to give us more room to talk about the other facilities and other inspections uh, in, a, in the future meetings. Thank so, you so much. That's the update on Canyon Oaks. Thank you. Thank you. Just oh. say too that this um, kind of a point that was raised from last year, there are no uh, court referred or wards of the court at Canyon Oaks right now. So we were not able to All interview right. any youth. And there haven't been any over the last year. Correct. Yeah. So there's nobody like to show you that, Kim? Or there are, di no? there are, there are different eight. ways. So C Canyon Oaks is a facility that supports youth who have uh, mental health uh, conditions, and they can be referred to Canyon Oaks through various, mm -hmm. through various ways. Uh, we, have, we have jurisdiction to, inter to interview and to see, you know, information on um, kids that are there that have been placed there by the court. In the last 12 months, there have been no youth placed there by the, there by the court. They've all been referred by Even, their school districts. And we still chose to go forward with the inspection because it's still a location that is actively considered by the court and by, and by, the, by uh, different county agencies for placement of youth. So we went forward with the inspection anyway. Um, but, but yes, there have been no youth there. So and until Judge Edizadi tells us not to inspect, we'll continue to inspect. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Wilson, do yes. you have an update yes. on the education uh, inspection? The education inspection is going to be on Monday for the Youth Service Center and for Camp Kemp. Uh, and then... Uh, and then on Friday of next week for Canyon Oaks, we have the largest inspection team ever, and I spell that with an E dash B A H. Um, <laughs> there are so many people. If you're on the educational inspection team, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there are like 10 people total. Team effort. Team effort. Um, yeah, it's, it, you can't. You cannot have a quorum of the commission on this. Oh. For the Juvenile Justice Commission, I believe. No. No. no? no. Okay. Well. We'll look again, but I believe they're to... split between the different uh, the different facilities so that maybe we yeah. don't have a quorum. They're but not. We'll... But why don't... Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, all... talk we'll, about be related, we'll be responsible to each other. We have not had a meeting with a quorum uh, um, yeah, during I, this whole time. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned last week and maybe I, uh, last month, and I, maybe I can talk a little bit more. So, the way the school department is organizing itself is trying to build in capacity in the organization. So, we have Nancy McGee, and then Chris Schaus, and then Sarah Notch, who's going to be a new uh, name to you, although she's an old familiar at San Mateo County Office of Education. She is our primary contact, Sarah Notch. We're not going to um, annoy <laughs> the on-site staff as much as we, you, we used to go to Shelly for everything, but underneath Sarah Notch, there's Michael Doherty, and then there's James Vaughn, who is the new principal, and then Jonas Barber, who is the vice principal. So that sort of has been changed. I also had a conversation with the SCC yesterday about educational inspections going forward. And I sent all of you an email. Um, our inspection will continue to serve its purpose. And then BSCC will have a third party inspection group. And I write in that email what that third party could be. Um, and so BSCC was not apparently doing any educational inspection work itself. But Prior. now- Prior. But now the law yeah. has changed and BSCC has to do its own work as well. Before it was relying on our work exclusively and now it's going to do its own work. I think that's like wonderful. So they'll be accepting our inspection on top of doing their inspection, yes. which will really be um, a nice addition. Yeah. So, and both are technically the facility inspection. They're not the school itself. It's the school within the context of the facility. So it's, it's Title 15. Um, I think that's everything about education. Thank you so much. I just wanted to do a clarifying point. The reason why there were so many folks on the education inspection is because we had two new commissioners sworn in today. And um, it's really important that we get folks trained as soon as possible. So next year, the team is really ready to sort of 
we can branch out and we can send one member here and one member there. We start every year um, with folks who aren't trained, then it, it slows down the process. It takes longer to do. So um, maybe in, and this was the only inspection that hadn't started yet. Yes. So that added the extra number. So I don't know. Uh -huh. but the, I was hoping that, that they could continue so they could be trained so that next year we're even. right. So that was my hope. And I think the education team is also larger because last year probation didn't allow the commissioners under the age of 18 to participate in inspections. And yes. so those younger people are very excited to be on the education team because they get to see every facility in, in one swoop. So um, those are the circumstances. I promise Monroe and I will figure out how to be legal. Compliant with the brown. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You not only cannot have them meet as more than six commissioners, since we now have 12, seven is your, our quorum, mm -hmm. but you can't do it additively either. Right. We so can have a chain discussion. We should yeah. probably we should, we can sideline on this, but yeah. basically it's the Delinquency Prevention Commission. It doesn't matter. It, it's a state organization and it's subject to the Brown Act. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll have a group call. We'll make Which, sure yeah. we're, we'll comply. Yeah. Sounds great. Um, okay, well, thank mm -hmm. you. So, um, so it sounds to me like. Um, I know the YSC inspection, we still have a full day of documentation to do. Paul and I need to go back to Camp Camp and interview the girls. Both of them had COVID when we were there, so we weren't able to interview them. Um, so we have to go back for that. So I don't anticipate that our reports will probably be in a phase where we can bring them to you until the October meeting for those two. For those two? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. And, um... Um, what about education? What do we think? So education, if I can, if we can submit with, so because we have the educational testing project, which is separate, right? which is separate, yeah. but in parallel, yeah. if I can submit the document in draft form with a say, statement that there's a link to a secondary draft document, <laughs> that is that project, then I think we can be ready by September. Well, by, well, by next month. Sure. With a draft. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Why not? Okay. Information's not going to change. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, but and... if you want to delay it, then you can have both things. Well, that no, I don't nice. think we want to delay it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, there, and there's folks that are asking for us to do presentations and whatnot on this going forward. So the sooner we can wrap it up, the better. So, and then we don't need the special meeting. Maybe we could. Thank yeah, last so just to clarify for everybody, last year, normally we don't have a meeting in December because normally we're meeting on the last Tuesday of the month. And of course, the last Tuesday in December is the holidays. Uh, so um, so we try to avoid having a meeting in December uh, unless we still have inspection reports to approve, which we need to do by the end of the year. Um, I think if if by latest October, everyone can produce a draft. That'll give us time to then provide feedback on the draft, get a final done and approve it in November. Um, so sounds like we're on track for that. It's just a matter of the presentation time. Yeah. I think last year, because the YSC is such a big presentation, big inspection that it really needed its own meeting, but this might work out if we have the two other inspections in September and then you would have the focus yeah, I could in, October. in October. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's a good reason to keep the education draft on track for September. Okay. And any other commissioners have questions about that schedule or anything else? I have a question. I just wanted to follow up on what Joanna mentioned earlier was that there was a COVID uh, outbreak at Camp Camp and Clark and uh, Ms. Clark and Busto still entertained the, the uh, inspection. Yeah. And I think some of the highlights is the, how hard they're working with such short of staff at a drop of a hat, they can just be moved. Uh, and then the other thing was, you know, I want to just give uh, credit where credit's due, like the chief did not renew the contract with Sonoma. So I wanted to highlight that, that uh, we appreciate uh, that the chief and, and the probation is now uh, understanding and taking steps to ensure that youth remain 
in their natural environment while they receive uh, the best rehabilitation possible. And uh, again, you know, we don't know if this is final, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the probation and Chief Keene uh, for, uh, for opting out on renewing that contract. Mm -hmm. Awesome. One of the highlights each year during inspection time, it's, it's always nice to talk with the youth, but one of the highlights for me is always talking with the men and women who actually work with our children. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very, very rewarding and um, they, they do an extraordinary job. And so, um, yeah, thank you for mentioning yeah, that. Absolutely. Any other comments or questions for commissioners about inspections? I had one question. We had listed a lesion as a possible um, facility to inspect. And I can't remember whether we staffed anyone on that or not. I think we signed up for it. You we, we did. And I think there's some, because we haven't done it in some time, I need to get some further clarification from Judith on whether or not we can just schedule it. I need to make sure that yeah, I want to make sure everybody's on board on the county line. It's something that fell under our jurisdiction in the past. I don't see why it wouldn't this time, yep. um, but I think it's always good to to get everybody sign off before we show up. Right, because <laughs> we haven't done it in, in a number of years. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, and are youth no longer kept at the receiving home at the bottom of the hill? That's what we're talking about. Oh, that's now called Alicia. Yes. Wow. Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah. rebrand. And no, I think it's... Yeah, I don't believe um, we haven't received a letter that I'm aware of from BSCC that outline lists any of the police or sheriff stations that have held any children. So I think I think we're moving away from that now that we have the new law where they call the lawyer before they even speak with them. I just think kids are no longer going to police stations. They're just being booked. We're sort of, you know, so that's why we don't have any. Right. But um, that was also on the on the list of that is a, an obligation of ours if the BSCC reports that we have any and have we, we, I haven't uh, received any no. Okay. No. no. Okay. Um, so I think that's uh, that's the update. It's the plan. Well, I have sure. A yes. Question. Um, so I'm hearing that. Um, when we do the inspections, the reports are given, the reports have been submitted to Chief Keene, or is it submitted to the hall itself? Once you guys do the reports of your findings and everything else, who gets those reports? So it goes to the state, it goes to the SCC, it goes to the court, it goes to the private public defender's office, it goes to the district attorney's office, it goes to county office of ed, it goes to John Key, it goes to Ms. Clark, um, who am I missing? It goes to the HRS. Yeah. Um, it basically goes to every system partner that we have. Okay, so if it goes to all of these people, can anybody give me an understanding on what was recommended last year? Yes, and, and it's not touched. Yeah, so and it was it's posted online. Okay. So it's on if you go to Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention Commission San Mateo mm -hmm. and you go under inspections, mm -hmm. you can see every inspection. On the front page that we that we did last year, mm -hmm. and then you can also go into the whole history of inspections since since the internet. <laughs> okay, so I mean, so okay. On that note, then we provide all the information to all of these groups for this year's inspection. Where's gonna Where's the push gonna be to get the fixes done or started? So yeah. in the system, how does one of the things that you'll find in the inspection reports is is sort of an accounting of what was recommended last year mm -hmm. and whether or not in the 12 months anything has changed. Um, I think that's one way. The, the other it. thing is asking for, we're asking for our partners to provide feedback to responses, mm -hmm. to, to, to recommendations. So we're asking that within 45 days, can they make comment on whether they agree, disagree, and whether they will have or will be looking at mm -hmm. implementing something. Uh, yeah. We did that last year. Nobody replied to us, but we're going to give it a go this year. Well, maybe no one replied on yours, but like, for example, Canyon oh. Oaks did reply. Oh, oh yes, yeah, yes. We, we I was Canyon Oaks. Canyon. Sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah. Many, some people do reply. So if they don't reply, it just gets tabled, basically. Well, not necessarily. Well, necessarily. We, we push throughout the year. We bring it up. We mention it. Um, we take it upon ourselves to, to 
push forward and, and try to solve the problem in another way. I, um, when yeah. Chief Keen was here, I asked him rhetorically, why aren't you replying to us? Mm -hmm. you know, rhetorical only in that there wasn't an answer to it, but yeah. I, think, I think there's <laughs> more awareness maybe because it was something we did for the first time last year. So in previous years, it was like we wrote the report and put it into a, a, a psychic garbage can. And oh. now we're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> your, your words. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all my words. <laughs> <laughs> From my perspective, the document was supposed to the whole year. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I guess the last thing I'll say is that, uh, like, I think on the day of our last meeting, uh, in July, there was a presentation to the Board of Supervisors in which Chief Keen got up and talked about some of the things that had been done, um, mm -hmm. that, that had been recommended by the Commission, as well as there are quarterly um, juvenile, juvenile Justice Coordinating Council meetings. Mm -hmm. It's another commission under juvenile justice that, uh, that you can also find on the probation website. And, and sometimes in those meetings, recommendations are addressed as well. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I, I want to finally add, you know, community members can sit both on the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council and also on this commission. Okay. So there is a, a vehicle for community member input in both of those. Both have our, uh, the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Commission is required to have two Council. community members. Council, thank you, Susan. <laughs> well, it's required to have community members. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And also, I wanted to say that uh, the community themselves, like yourselves, uh, when you are engaging in some sort of interaction, social interaction, that's something that I actually lean on. I will point to that inspection report and just everyday conversations and start pointing to that and asking people to take a look at that document. And uh, it's surprisingly that, you know, people become animated when they, when you tell them, yeah, these uh, these things that we're talking about improving are on an inspection report that go to all elected officials. Uh, anyone has access to it. Uh, and that usually attracts people like Rebecca and the community that she's serving that want to get involved. They're just looking for ways to get involved. And that's an excellent way to get people more involved in the commission work is just constantly bringing that in and carry a copy. I carry copies of some of them at times. Sometimes I like to hand people the black and white. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's just uh, everyday conversations. This is how the community raises awareness. This is how we mobilize. And this is how we inject systemic change. Thank you so much. Thank well, you. Thank you. Like they, they put in, instead of a pile of a dirt, Lot. They now have uh, artificial turf. They redid the basketball court and um, storage, which they put in storage for the teachers. Mm -hmm. So they they haven't been able to get everything done, but it is not really on them because they've been trying, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the county just hasn't. And that's like all facilities, though. I mean, is, I mean, all facilities are trying. So you say they've they've tried. They've made the progression. But we have how many other facilities have progression been made in all these other facilities? The bigger facilities where there's actually kids. Mm -hmm. um, have, actually have we, kids I mean, the, Canyon Oaks is how many? Like, I mean, 11. Um, there, there are 11 kids. kids. So, so like the bigger facilities that are only holding 21 kids, like we just stated, I'm at the YSC. Is there that progression? And I think that's what I'm, I'm trying to, you know, trying to find out. I know it takes time, you know, little by little, but every place has to get hit. So are they just doing little by little one place at a time and then maybe eventually they'll get some, another one? Or are they trying to hit it all at one time to get these facilities and then just to piggy, par? Yeah, and just to piggyback up, is there like a formal process of whoever kind of takes ownership of a particular area that they come in and give status updates? Or inspections. Or like whatever recommendations that were made, just kind of give them a status is like, in this forum or maybe another yeah, where great it's suggestion Ruth right so that yeah. way they can you kind of hold them accountable right? yeah. in a yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. whenever there's an update on something that's changed or implemented I must say that um, during this year's inspection this is the third year I think that I've been involved in inspections and um, this is the most movement I've seen by probation since I've been on the commission and it's certainly appreciated. Thank you. We try to take the 
to, to heart. I mean, some things are bigger than us, some things take time, but I think we really have tried. I mean, and I know, speaking for myself and my counterparts, looking at suggestions that are made and try to bring them in. Even I've talked, when I was sitting in to Nancy, even speaking to parents, you know, as far as like visiting, bringing toys, like, or, um, you know, pillows or cups, you know, we, we, things that are immediate, we try to get on. But I have to say, you guys have done well because case of point, um, we have, and I, I had it presented at the last meeting, um, and Judge Edizadi, thank you, um, has allowed um, one of the youth's nieces to come. Yeah. She's under the age of five. Yeah. And so they've allowed her to bring a toy that she likes to, to, to make it, um, mm -hmm. to make it so that the family is still there. Yeah. Because not only, you know, we're all losing when our kids get um, incarcerated, but this is the other the other side. The ones who are under the age of yeah. five, yeah. six, they're feeling the loss also. So I have to say thank you for that one. Judge Edisadi, thank you also because you did approve it. Um, you know, just little things, yes. I, I, I've seen the changes just in the year that my child has been there. Um, but Fortunately, unfortunately, however you want to take the perspective of it, it's not just for myself. Right. It's for all those who come behind him to make sure that their stay, their visit, because it's only a visit, because hopefully one day they do go home, that their visit is, I don't want to say memorable, but something that they can take back to the streets and say, this is what I learned while I was there. You know, take it, take their experience back out into the community so that we don't get those that go into uh, the situation. So I say thank you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, let's keep moving along. We're, uh, we're in section five of the agenda uh, talking about current commission projects and Commissioner Wilson uh, yes. has an update for us on the transition project. Transition project. Uh, not making as much progress as I would like, but we are viewing case files tomorrow. We're talking to BHRS on Friday, um, and uh, we would love to include probation. I sent over questions to Chief Keene January or February and got uh, the lawyer replied to them, but if there is somebody like who supervises the Phoenix program for us to talk to, who is the Phoenix person? You're in flux. In flux, okay, so. Uh, Ashley Burrand. You can reach out to uh, maybe just send some. You can send it to me, okay. and then that way I can get it to the appropriate person. Okay, great. Just a conversation. I, it would be such a shame to not reflect as many perspectives as possible in the report. Um, we have gotten feedback from only two CASAs, no parents officially, no youth officially, but there's a questionnaire that I've linked into the Zoom, and I'd also be happy to send the questionnaire to anybody who said me, me. Um, <laughs> uh, and we, I, we will be getting more CASA involvement in November. So this, this project kind of is not hitting its works in terms of desired timeline. Desired timeline. This, this project wants a December meeting. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> this project can roll over to 2024 also. Yeah, absolutely, so. yes. <laughs> and, and to Melissa's point also, there's a questionnaire in both Spanish and English. And so we're really trying to get the underground parents, CASA, uh, stake, uh, not stakeholders, perspective on the issue. So I was wondering if any of you, we can share this form with you and you can send it to your community, your network. Mm -hmm. You can help us out in trying to understand the transitioning process better. This is actually a good program. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have it in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is, it is truly a, a good yeah. program. Um, it's just getting the youth wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. that, that's always the biggest issue. Well, I think, it's and, and Judge Adesati might be able to, to uh, contribute to this, I think, I think all delinquency youth are now being offered or appointed. I'm not sure, ca CASAs? Uh, at DISPO, we will um, we evaluate each case. It depends on the case. Some youth don't want a CASA. Mm -hmm. Some youth don't need a CASA. So it's always at DISPO. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think CASAs are, being, are, are becoming more prevalent in the delinquency side of the 
justice system. Yeah. Yes. I would do with that. Yes. And, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, yeah. And I will be speaking November 19th to all of San Mateo County CASAs doing sort of a, this is the commission training. And I hope to get some more questionnaires filled out. <laughs> Melissa, where are you get, where are you presenting? At, at CASA? Wherever that is. Wherever that is. Wherever that is. CASA does uh, monthly ongoing education for volunteers. Wonderful. Yeah, that's great. And uh, Jennifer Martinez, they, they have a juvenile justice coordinator. And so that's been great to have that relationship too. Okay, speaking of um, youth transitions uh, out of probation and out of detention, um, Commissioner Agarwal, we have you on the agenda uh, to talk about your the website that you've been working on. Yeah, so- Do you want us, you want us to pull it up or do we- I think everyone has a link. Um, the link is actually in the agenda if yes. anybody uh, is interested. Yeah, so um, we had sent out the link, I think about a month ago, and a lot of the commissioners responded with some great feedback that was implemented. Huge thank you to Commissioner Wilson, who really left a detailed review. Um, so I've been having a conversation with um, Ms. Aram about putting this on the kind of uh, juvenile justice section of the probation website. So I think that's where that's gonna be going, and that's kind of most of the updates I have right now. So, and, and the youth in the hall can access it through that website. So that's what we're working on right now. I think there was some confusion around like what websites they're allowed to access, but that is the end goal. Yeah. So we, the, the link that is currently in the agenda, has that um, taken, been revised to include the feedback that you've gotten? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Good work. Thank you. Any other questions for Commissioner I mean, if, Agarwal? If we did have time, it might be useful to put it up so people could see it. Don't you think? No. I'll let her decide. Okay. That. Yeah. I mean, I like we can. I also think like all of the commissioners have seen it. it was sent out, but we can still work in progress. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. guys can also. The link is in the agenda packet, and we sent it out. So if you want to take a look, you can. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we'll keep. We'll keep moving along now to uh, section six of the agenda. Um, this is where we talk about announce, get announcements and bring up any new ideas or new business. And uh, I think that I, I read the minutes from the last meeting, there wasn't mention of the tattoo removal services, but um, Commissioner Rasmussen has new news on that. Uh, and you wanted to update us on that. Well, yes, and I basically wanted to let the community know as well that um, we have, uh, there is a tattoo removal program for San Mateo County that's run through the Police Activities League uh, building in Redwood City. And uh, Jennifer Martinez is the contact there. Youth can fill out the application, have their parents fill out the application, and they could go down and get their tattoos removed free of charge. Uh, they schedule appointments every eight weeks until the tattoo is completely removed. Uh, so there's that program that's available to anyone who's interested, um, again, through the Redwood City Police Department, and it's located at the PAL building. And then most recently, we've been working to see if we could get the company New Skin to come into the juvenile hall to remove tattoos for the kids that are in the hall. And so we were able to identify this company, New Skin, and um, they uh, have received approval from probation to come in. And it's my understanding uh, that we have um, a, a few children who are interested in um, exploring their options there. So um, I just wanted to let folks know that that's happening. And so my hope is that whoever is interested in uh, getting their you know, gang affiliated tattoos removed and they're getting their therapeutic treatment and programming um, like the judge says it, when you change your thinking, you change your behavior. And so with um, the removal of these tattoos, it really gives them a head start coming back home and into their community. So I just wanted to give that up to you. So is this, um, is this service covered by, uh, does the county pay for it? I don't believe so. The police department. Yeah, and New Skin, I think, is a nonprofit, and they probably work off grants and whatnot. It's wonderful. all free of charge. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, 
and it's nice. Um, we were exploring the options of bringing the kids from the hall down to Redwood City, but the fact that we can get the company to come in every eight weeks with their equipment is fantastic. So that was a group effort and uh, so good outcome. I guess right. it's positive modeling too for any of the youth who who do it, it and they're kind of setting a, oh, yes. a good example for the exactly it sends a message of ripple mm. through the yeah the ripple is it any tattoo that they, that they can get removed or is it just affiliation like relate, related tattoos well, or? i think because we don't always know what's an affiliation right <laughs> and so um i'm sure there's some discretion mm -hmm. but i have not heard that you know it's uh, they really scrutinize them mm -hmm. if they want the tattoos removed then then uh, yeah good example of helping to source programming and yeah. services for the hall thanks commissioner yeah. um you're next also uh in the updates and announcements there was wanted to talk about resolutions that were passed at the um county office of um, county office of ed Board yeah, so, of Trustees. Um, I know that, uh, yeah, so um, we have uh, Chelsea Benini is here with us, and I know she does a lot of work. She supports our work as well um, on the, with the County Office of Education. And there was two things that have come up recently that I thought it was important to highlight. One was, uh, as many re might remember, back in January, um, they had voted to close Gateway. Yeah. And I know that that raised quite a few concerns. Um, we didn't. We were kind of surprised by the sudden announcement that they were closing and what was going to take their place. And we know that they provide valuable services to kids, uh, mostly in the system, who are having trouble with their home schools. So we were very pleased when they extended the closure back in May of 2022. But I'm absolutely thrilled that on uh, June 30th. Um, they have rescinded the closure of Gateway outright. Ooh. So we will be, uh, Gateway is uh, saved and um, staying it'll, be, it'll be staying open and uh, serving our, our children, which I think is a, a huge bonus for them and for our community. And uh, secondly, I wanted to highlight another resolution that uh, they passed and that was having to do with funding of uh, court and community schools and the importance of uh, operating these schools and the value that they bring to families and children in the community. So um, Chelsea Benini will be providing us with signed copies of both resolutions, um, but I just wanted to put it out there that this is um, some work that's uh, recently been passed. And if anyone has any questions on either of these, I'm sure uh, Trustee Benini would uh, answer any questions anyone might have. It might be interesting maybe to get, um, I know Janae Luttrell used to speak to us and update us on salient points with the court and community schools and maybe with Gateway to remain open for the future, we could get an update at some point in time when we have some time in the agenda just to understand further investment and what the programming will look like there. Mm. I know there was a lot of talk, there was a lot, not a lot of talk, but uh, uh, there were a lot of plans in place for the type of supportive programming that should be there and some issues with how to provide that level with the declining enrollment. So just be interesting to hear how that that's Janae resolved. Luttrell was our contact and then Shelly Johnson and Shelly Johnson has left uh, um, Chris, the county was, opposite of it, Chris right? So who is our She's putting her hand up. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, Chelsea, are you off mute? I I am. Uh, um, I apologize for not being able to be there. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. Um, I I don't have too much to share, but I just just did want to say that there has been during this time when the the school was slated for closure um, as of June of twenty four. And that's what we rescinded in July this year. Um, there has been an ongoing process um, that our county superintendent has been undertaking with the schools who or the districts, I should say, who um, mostly have been using the site. And so that's that's underway. And there's a lot of discussions around, you know, uh, what the needs are, how, how things could be um, different or, you know, if anything needs to change. So that's ongoing. And then 
Um, as of, you, you will see actually in the um, resolution when you have it um, soon, that part of the, re the rescission of the date by the county board was in anticipation of putting in place an ad hoc committee of the county board members, which was actually effectuated um, at our meeting last week. So we now have an, an ad hoc committee of our county board to also listen and um, understand what the needs are around, around Gateway. And, and even broader than that, I think the, the conversation is broached and I've had discussions with um, with the supervisor staff for uh, and supervisors uh, Corzo and Mueller in connection with their ad hoc or whatever they called it, their subcommittee to discuss um, the future of Camp Glenwood, which was in response to this commission's um, request for further discussion around step down and all of that in your report on the reimagining. So, um, so we will uh, three member uh, ad hoc committee hope to meet with their subcommittee and also just other stakeholders in the community. So we can hear as board members, um, since the schools, the Courtney Community Schools are under our purview, um, and so uh, we, you know, it's up to us whether to close them or not. Um, so it, it would be terrific if there could be perhaps an opportunity to meet with a subgroup or um, a, an existing group of this commission with our um, with our ad hoc for the county board. And we'll be meeting tomorrow to start setting up our calendar. So if somebody wants to reach out offline, that would be fantastic. So thank you. Thank you so much for those clarifications. And I'm, I'm very pleased to hear about this subcommittee because I think sometimes um, our facilities, our court and community school facilities get overlooked because they serve a smaller portion. But I appreciate the passion and dedication that you bring to the table to make sure that their needs are being met. Thank you. You're welcome. I will just jump ahead quickly in the agenda um, because I think in two items I'm on the agenda just to update on the reimagined juvenile hall committee. So since um, since Commissioner Bonini brought that up, uh, my only update was just to say that following the presentation to the Board of Supervisors, when uh, Supervisor Corzo and Supervisor Mueller said that they wanted to investigate how Camp Glen how or whether Camp Glenwood might be used in the future, um, I just reached out to, to to them to say, you know, how can we help uh, and be involved? Um, so I think that uh, the, the Board of Supervisors has mostly been in recess and taking some vacation in August. So they haven't really gotten started on it yet as far as I know. Um, but I just wanted to update the commission that I had reached out to, to their offices. That was all. All right, if there are no more questions about the, about the court community schools, then we can move on to an update on the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council, which did have um, its quarterly meeting this past month. And usually I attend that, but I was uh, out, of, out of town. So Commissioner Huber Levy attended. Yes, it's the, my okay. first time attending a JJCC meeting. It was very interesting. The meeting room was packed, very busy. Um, there was a review of the funding streams, which will remain constant over the next years. However, AB 505, which is a bill currently going through the legislature, which is to make extensive changes in the scope and authority of the Health and Human Services Office of Youth and Community Restoration, OYCR, which would move all of the current juvenile justice functions and operations of BSCC over to OYCR as of July 1, 2025. So it's huge in, their, in the, uh, the review of legislation that I just read, it said it's a complex rewrite of California juvenile justice law and includes facility standards, inspections and enforcement, um, the office of the ombudsperson, new grants, um, the way data will be collected, how um, access to juvenile case files and in the I thought it was very interesting, the authority of the ombudsperson, new authority will be invested or vested in the OYCR ombudsperson, including the right to inspect or visit any juvenile facility at any time, rather than on 48 hours notice under current law. 
the right to interview youth, make audio and video recordings or photos of the visit. It goes on, it's quite comprehensive. So that could change the um, utilization of funding. And that was the one thing that Chief Keen made note of. Programs and services over the next three years, there was an extensive breakdown provided in an agenda packet that is available to the public. Um, Chief Keen emphasized that the priorities that are established by their LAP for the county drives funding and services, but they also can consider emerging trends. He noted, I think in response to um, community comment about, um, and, and in our care made public comment at that meeting, following up on the recommendations made in our inspection report, um, he noted that most of the youth in the facility are there for less than one month. The mean stay is nine days. So the most common stay is nine days. And the challenge for programming in that time um, is mm -hmm. that you know, you know the low youth population is a good thing, but it impacts the abilities of the providers to provide services for that limited kind of stay. And it's not even just having small contracts, it's having contracts that can be very nimble timing wise. So they are looking for modifications to programming contracts in order to be more nimble, to provide more limited term services available when they need them, mm -hmm. i.e. for an advanced sexual offender program, mental health services. And they're hoping that in the next LAP, the focus will be primarily on preventative programs in the community. He also put so, so what's an LAP? It's the local uh, action, action, plan. action plan. Yes, local you. action plan that, that they do every five years. Okay. So there's a need to recognize that there's a degree of limitations in San Mateo County because of our demographics and our numbers. That he the comment he made is it's not it's never going to look like Santa Clara County here mm -hmm. because of that. Um, the conversation about the actual in custody population and re realignment population projected that it will not be above six from realignment. So we're talking about small numbers. Over what it's, time period? Yeah, yeah. In the future. In the future. <laughs> it's a prediction based on what they know now, but nobody can guarantee what will happen. Right, right. But based on current trends, they're projecting not more than six yeah. in, from the realignment. In, sec in, in the secure, secure track. track. Oh. So meaning six youth that would be having long-term stays. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And Susan Mannheimer, mm -hmm. who is the former police chief, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. who attended yeah. and so, spoke yeah. very eloquently uh, about things and suggested that with those numbers, her question was, should we, we be looking at a model of providing individualized plans for the kids? Yeah. Yeah. So there's some discussion on that. Um, at its core, Chief Keen noted that they need to evaluate them, reevaluate the mission of this body, the JJCC. At its core, it's providing services. Um, the change in numbers coming through juvenile uh, detention, the YSC, is based on changes in school discipline, school based discipline. So advances have been made in reducing referrals for school discipline. And they do not ever see the population blooming into larger numbers again. Regarding the suggestions for utilization of other facilities, SB 81 funds used to build the YSC were very prescriptive, which means there are restrictions on using the facility in other ways that are in inherent. In inherent and inhibit mm -hmm. some creativity. So it's a challenge. Um, he noted that the Kemp School could be used as a connector, will be, will be used as a connector to help kids reintegrate back into homeschool. Is the plan. For for secure track, like as a step down, I'm not clear, not that. clear. Okay, no, Kate, because that's currently done. About that. but, I mean, that's currently the case for girls that are at Camp Camp. Right, that's so limited. They might be living at home but coming to school at at Camp. Right. So maybe he's talking about expanding that to more than. That would be good. Camp Glenwood, and he noted the interest and the subcommittee that is formed to look at that. Um, his comment was that requires a higher level of resources to bring that back. Uh, also, he noted that they're moving to tablets for youth at the YSC, which is cool. And for schoolwork and communication with families can also use to connect with vocational opportunities and training. So that might be using the tablet might give greater access to a website like Zahara is um, working on. 
and uh, including things like certification for hazmat, telehealth, substance abuse, uh, substance education curricula for education therapy uh, to access education. Um, so just something that will be providing additional tools for youth. Um, and uh, that, that's, oh wait, no, I have more. <laughs> more. Anyway, there was a lot covered in there. I was fascinated by the whole thing. Maybe it's just because I was new to it. Um, the, the, final, the final kind of stage of the meeting was yeah. noting that they are presenting to the, the attendees of the meeting that uh, an option and a proposal to move to hybrid meetings. And I think that was generally accepted as a very good suggestion. And then there was some discussion about how members could participate remotely up to two times. Voting members could potentially fully participate from satellite locations as long as it was agendized and quorum has to be met in the main meeting. That was interesting. So, but from the, that point on, meetings will be recorded and made available to the public and will be hybrid to allow public participation. Um, and the county council is going to clarify the rules for member participation. Right. But I think that was a real positive because I think at the beginning of the meeting, um, Beth had uh, actually that. raised the point that that would be something that would be very much welcomed for the participating public. So, Commissioner Rasmussen. So I um, thank you so much for that detailed report. I also was in attendance at that meeting, and a couple takeaways for me were. Um, knowing that there's this five-year local action plan and basically they use that as the roadmap of where money is going to be spent and what programs are going to be utilized. Um, and I think that Chief Manheimer really hit it out of the park when she said that the, the current action plan is really sort of out of step with where we are um, with our numbers, you know, post-COVID, like the world has changed, right? And so the term that I heard her use was on-demand services and individualized services. And I really think that that's the direction that we're going. Um, because if we really want to rehabilitate kids, we need to meet their individual needs. And while the mean number may be nine days, we have quite a few kids that circle out within three and four days. And then we've got a dozen that are there, you know, anywhere from 30 days to two years in counting. So it's the 30 days to two years in counting are the ones I'm concerned about, the ones who need the more intensive programming, the more intensive therapies, because um, we have them for a longer period of time. I think to say the average stay is nine days, well, that's true, but we also have half of the population that's been there for a considerable exactly. amount of time. It wasn't the average, it was the mean. mean right, most okay. common. Oh, the median. Mean. No, mean, mean, mean is, average. is the average. I mean, median, mean median is the most common. No, so mode is the most common. So, but what I'm that's class. Yes. So, uh, I not very that, long. <laughs> I think that, um, and we'll get all those stats again. What they are for this year, Tony Birch is in the process of, of gathering those for us. But I think that. I think we need to be mindful when we're in spaces that on-demand individualized services is probably the direction we need to be looking at if we want to meet these needs. My sense was that was uh, uh, like, that it was accepted in the room that that was yes. a way to go, but, yes. but then the reality of the challenge of That's doing right. that is... It's a new way of... Yeah, right. of, and so we all have to be you know, have our radar up, like how can we meet this need? How can we do this? The local action plan is a five year plan that is required by the state, the state legislation that provides the funding. I believe the local action plan was last done in 2020 and it goes to 2025, is that right? It was done before the pandemic? Yeah. Yes. So another reason it might be out of date, but if it was done before the pandemic, then and the five year, deal then maybe there's a year or two left on it um mm -hmm. anyway i'm just wondering when do the pay next, attention what, to trends what, do said. we know when the next one is going to the planning and the analysis and work for the next local action plan is going to start does anyone know, I know how that works 
I don't know either. I know they hire a company and they yeah. They hire a company to do it and there's a lot of work that goes into it and the and and anyone who wants to read those can read ASR. them on the probation website. ASR, and, yeah. ASR is the company that ASR and, and, and they're they're very interesting documents. But point being, I think next year is when they might start gearing up to redo it. Uh, Tony Virgins also mentioned that there'll be much more specific information on the programs presented at the November meeting, full breakdowns of the programs and services at a very granular level, um, and how it will be impacted by needing to scale to a small population. So that'll be a very interesting meeting to participate yeah. in. And we Do also we have any uh, public comment on this uh, on the JJC CC meeting. <laughs> Kate Easter. Um, just noting that um, so we are in the middle of the 2020 to 2025 LAP yeah. um, and it was it started in 2019 to prepare for that one um, and it looked like it was going through about April of 2020 um, so that would mean that 2024 to 2025 is kind of likely the next process yeah thank you <laughs> very helpful quick so, sorry Commissioner Asherson I think I cut you off did you have another um, no, I think um, I don't remember what I was. Saying. <laughs> okay, I have some. sounds good. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so just to follow up, did anyone ask at this uh, at this meeting whether uh, there was some sort of request to find a way to use the YSC differently? We, we, you know, we've heard that before. Uh, has there been any type of study or uh, questions to find out what it would take? to change how we use a facility like the YSC? Like, do we have to go to the Senator? Um, was I don't know, the only, the, I mean, at least, oh, sorry, you have, give your hand well, up. What I was gonna say is he explained that the, the building was built with bond money that was yeah. very specific on how it could be used. So it was my understanding that, and I could be wrong, but until we pay that money off, we yes, have to follow it. those rules, yeah. right? It has to be because it's bond money. Right. And, and then the thank you. And then the other thing was it wouldn't be a bad idea to look like Santa Clara, because uh, when we were finding looking for alternatives to incarceration, we encountered uh, a model that Santa Clara was currently working on. I think it was the National Council for Youth Law. Uh, they had located a grant for a million dollars, and they were interested in sharing that million dollars half five hundred thousand. For San Mateo County, 500,000 for Santa Clara County to create or find a model that would work toward the decarceration of young girls because our numbers were so low. We had the prime uh, situation to like really find out how that model could look. Uh, and it was unfortunately overlooked by our, our probation. So I think that as we move forward now with this chief uh, talking about ind individualized treatment, I think that that would be something that we should probably explore as a commission to find out if there's any other models being used around the country or here in California regarding the decarceration of young girls. All right, before we move on to our last public agenda item, are there any other comments from the public on what we heard about the JJCC meeting and the discussion there? I have one more comment. I'm not the public, but <laughs> you're the, the reporter. So yes, if there's, I don't see any hands raised uh, online or in the room, so go ahead. Um, Supervisor Corso at the end of the meeting did request that she thought it would be useful for the JJCC to have current information on the utilization of facilities. The population and facilities yeah. and and chief keen had responded that it's not really relevant to the mission of the council but i think that the discussion led them to a place where they realized in order to consider how to be nimble about contracts and how to plan for the future one needs to be very aware of the numbers and the trending of the numbers so there was some discussion about how those numbers could be provided to that meeting and um, Supervisor Corzo, oh, and, and Chief Key mentioned that the, those numbers are typically provided to this meeting so that mm. they could get them from this meeting. So Supervisor Corzo and I were talking about how it made sense for us to get the same information 
and then you guys would only have to do it once. <laughs> so whatever we kind of come up with collaboratively as the relevant information, perhaps we could just send it out like kind of in a chart form, like here's what will be useful on a monthly basis for us. And on the quarterly basis, you would have it for them too. So we can talk about that offline. And we were also interested in getting on the prevention side of getting data from the police departments. Like where is it, what are, what's the arrest data? How do we know where we need to put in prevention efforts if we don't know where the arrests are taking place? And we maybe let's say we put in a bunch of money in South City and South City is doing much better. Okay, well maybe we can move those funds next door to San Bruno. So I think that data is important to know where the monies need to be spent. I've had a difficult time obtaining uh, arrest data. And I think the supervisor is interested in finding out how can we get all of that data so we can really make informed choices on where we're spending our money and where we can make the most impact. Yeah, and on, and on, on that note there, uh, City Council, Lizette Garnica, was able to provide me Redwood City specific Redwood City data that they have a dashboard on. And the, the data was pretty alarming that I just got a hold of. We're going to be discussing that tomorrow at a town hall, but the Redwood City data specifically to that city is alarming and it should be concerning. And it makes sense that Redwood City tends to be the most incarcerated city, um, followed by San Mateo and then. San Bruno and EPA tied for third. Uh, so I think that that's a, a great idea that we start making contact with different police departments and finding out if they all have a, a dashboard like Redwood City Police Department is, is, has recently shared uh, that if they can mirror that because it makes our job very easily to find out which cities we need to focus on when we're out there in the community doing the work that we do. Is it on their website? I'm not sure it's on the website, but I got it on a slide and I was pretty, I was pretty impressed with the data that Redwood City is keeping it. And I'll, I'll be sharing that. Sounds like a good reason to revive our data dashboard project. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, really, and really quick, I want to give a shout out because Chief Keen said that school districts are now changing the way they discipline. And so that he doesn't expect these numbers of incarceration to go, to go up. So a big shout out to all the board of trustees that are really doing the work to modify and find different ways of disciplining our kids rather than just putting the police on them. So a good job. I know Chelsea's up there. Uh, my friend Jennifer Blanco uh, is normally there as well, but a shout big shout out because that's awesome uh, sure that the chief that. has taken notice of that. And I think that we should all take notice of that too. So thank you. All right, let's, um, let's, let's move towards adjournment here. We had one more update, which is that, um, we the commission is going to have an annual retreat before our next uh, public meeting uh, we set the date as september 23rd um i do have a location um the congregational church of san mateo is going to donate space for us to uh to meet and last year the the county um also gave us some uh catering so um, logistics look like they're coming together for September 23rd. And uh, the next step is to, uh, is to get our agenda set. So um, any commissioners who are interested in, uh, in working with me to, to discuss what that agenda should be, I see hands going up, that's great. Reach out to me on email, we don't have to decide it right now, um, but we need to get a little group together to what to, uh, to get the agenda set for what we're going to talk about at the at the retreat on September twenty third. I didn't, but didn't. Oh, I can. It's fine. You, don't, <laughs> you don't have to do it right now. I to up to you. <laughs> Same facilitator we did last year. You won't. Okay. You won't. We have a I new think, facilitator. No, I think no facilitator. No facilitator I'd like this year. Recommend someone. His name is R J. Uh, from Half Moon yeah. Bay. This guy yeah. is good. Yeah. He's really good at what he does let's talk about it in a little subcommittee you, where we talk about send agenda me the link or contact you I, will. I uh i was thinking that you know that we could just talk amongst ourselves but uh but we'll, we'll figure that out <laughs> it, was a little, it was a little structured and formal last year and, and maybe a little more informal this year but that's something that we can decide when we talk it's about nice agenda. to free up everyone to participate though and let yeah it's true but it's worthwhile exploring 
Okay, Thank all right, we'll see. Uh, so that's it. That's just the last update. We will go forward with that retreat. And then our next meeting uh, is the last Tuesday of September when we will have inspections reports yeah, draft, yeah. drafted, mm -hmm. fantastic. All right, thank you everyone. Um, that adjourns our uh, our public meeting and commissioners should stick around for a, uh, a closed juvenile justice commission meeting, which I don't think will take too long, but we'll do that. Let's take a few minute break and come back and do that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone on Zoom. Thank you. We're going to hang up the Zoom now.